I was told to stick to my script, <laughs> because if you know me, you know that I don't. <laughs> it is a privilege and great honor to introduce this year's recipient to the Dr. Eileen Creighton Award for Teaching Excellence. This award is the highest accolade given to a faculty member, it is named in honor of an educator who devoted 42 years to Del Mar College, starting in 1938, serving in the roles of librarian, assistant registrar, English faculty, chair of the Department of English for 31 years, and the assistant dean of the Division of Arts and Sciences. Just like Dr. Creighton, our recipient exemplifies the qualities of an educator focused on student learning and impact, instruction and assessment, and professional growth and development. If this is your first convocation with us, let me give a brief explanation of how we present this award. We like to keep you in suspense. We will tell you about this person without revealing their name, gender, teaching discipline, or anything else may give away their identity. Instead, they, their, and this person will replace he, she, or their name. Now, after I finally stop talking, there will be a big reveal in the video presentation. Our recipient was nominated and selected by peers who recognize and value the contributions this person has made to education, to our students, and to Del Mar College. Our 2024 recipient began teaching at Del Mar College in 1999. And the years spent here, they have made a tremendous impact. An administrator wrote, as an instructor, this person is most rigorous and inspiring. The courses they teach may very well be the best in our entire state. This person exhibits superior levels of organization and a commitment to excellence in each and every phase related to quality instruction and educational stewardship. This person routinely volunteers to be on committees and actively participates in advising, registration, program reviews, and curriculum revisions. This person's versatility, coupled with their willingness to serve in a broad variety of capacities, makes them a most valuable asset to our college. A colleague wrote, this person cares about teaching and learning, and they care about students. It shows, and the students know it. This person prioritizes professional development, keeps up with technology and best practices, and strives to be the best instructor for their students. This person's classes are wildly popular, not because they're easy, but because the students know they will learn what they need to be prepared for their future careers. A former student wrote, this person's approach to teaching goes beyond the traditional transfer of knowledge. Their deep understanding of the subject matter is evident in every lecture, yet their ability to inspire and motivate sets them apart. They create a learning environment where students feel valued and supported, encouraging us to strive for excellence, not just academically, but personally and professionally as well. When I felt significant challenges in the pursuit of my degree, it was this person's unwavering support and encouragement that reignited my determination. The compassion was evident when they took the time to listen to my concerns and offered both practical advice and emotional support. This person's belief in my potential was a turning point for me. It transformed my self-doubt into confidence and motivated me to overcome the obstacles in my path. Another student wrote, this person is energetic and determined to make their students love the course as much as they do. They could sense when we struggled and needed to be taken under their wing. And once they did, we soon understood the concepts we never thought we'd be able to grasp. Soon I was passing my exams and my confidence as a student soared. This educator helped me see the beauty and challenges and how amazing it feels when you finally overcome them. More than just teaching me the subject of the class, they taught me how to believe in myself and to know I could do anything I put my mind to. And finally, from the recipient's own nomination portfolio, they wrote, the only thing more important to me than my students and their success in class and in life is my family. As I often state in my classes, you and my students are in my top three. First is my family. Second is my job here at Del Mar College. Third is my students. Everything else comes after that. It feeds my soul to see my students trying to better themselves and to live their lives for their loved ones through education. My love of helping others overcome difficult challenges and realize their full potential is the driving force behind why I teach. So to me, this is almost the pinnacle of success. It's about as close as you can get to it other than 
seeing our students move on into their careers. Um, it, it, it means more to me than words could express. Just to have my name thrown out there with some of the other names that have won it. Brian Hart, Brian Stone, Lloyd Poplin, Exe Hall, Mike Onsoldua, Mike Jones. I, I could, you know, I could list the whole list. It's, uh, it's humbling, it's an honor, and it's a validation that whatever I've been doing, what I've dedicated nearly half of my life to, uh, I've been successful at. And so, you know, ultimately that's what it means to me. For many of our students, Del Mar's the first opportunity to upward mobility, but for some of our students, it's their last best hope. And that drives me more than anything, knowing that our students are dependent upon us to come through and provide them a quality education so that they can change their family's history and trajectory. A couple of years ago, I had a heart attack. Um, it was minor, but I had some chest pain. And from the EMT who walked through my door to the girl who wheeled me into the OR or to the emergency room, to several people working in the emergency room, to the young lady named Anna who did my echocardiogram, to the to the surgical tech and the nurse that were in the OR when they went in to put my stent in and to the nurses that cared for me in post-op including the charge nurse of the floor they were all my former students <laughs> and um, who would think that having a heart attack would be your fondest memory but it's one of my fondest memories at Del Mar that the people who were taking care of me were the people that I trained. For 25 years, I haven't taken a summer or a semester off ever. And every time I go into lecture, I still get goosebumps and I still get excited and I still get an adrenaline rush to share what I find fascinating and beautiful and amazing, the human body and how it functions with my students. And also to share with them that, you know, if you, the career you've chosen is going to require my class and you have to love this, you have to be passionate about it, or you need to go do something else. I, I try to keep that at, at the root of everything and I hope that other professors keep in mind that our students are here for that. Um, they're here for that career and you should approach your courses with passion and, and enthusiasm and I think that's what kind of what all the people that have won the Creighton Award in the past, they represent that. Well, I'm uh, honored and humbled and overwhelmed at this. Um, it's rare that I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> for those of you who know me know that I can speak um, extemporaneously for a long time. Let me set this down real quick. You hold that, yes, sir. But like Mike, I'm gonna try to stick to some notes so I can keep it brief. I know all of y'all are waiting for that barbecue and that free lunch. And you're probably um, vibrating with energy and excitement and looking forward to the rest of this afternoon's meetings like I am. Um, <laughs> but I'd like to say thank you for, to a few people. I want to say thanks to Vern Kramer for nominating me. Vern's office is directly across the hall from mine. And uh, if you know Vern in his cavalier way, he walked across the hall one day and said, hey, I'm gonna nominate you for that Creighton Award. And turned around and walked off and I yelled across the hall, no Vern, please don't. Uh, uh, there's so many more people more deserving. If you nominate anyone in our, in our department, you should nominate Mike Wood. Um, excuse me. 
I think um, Mike deserves it far more than I ever would. And uh, I plan on nominating him soon. Uh, he has set the standard for how to teach anatomy and physiology and what it takes to be a faculty member. And I strive to be like that all the time. He's been one of my best friends and confidants. He's helped, um, I mean, I remember the day that I was hired, Mike showed up in my office with books and notes and said, anything you need, here it is. And I'm always here for you and he has been. He's been an, an amazing colleague. Now, Vern spent, I don't know, 30 something years as a geologist in the petrochemical industry. He got hired at Del Mar pretty close to the age of 70, I believe. And he has more energy and excitement and enthusiasm than anybody I know as he approaches the age of 80. And I wanna be like him when I grow up, and I mean that. <laughs> he has a passion for geology and the subject that he teaches like I do for anatomy and physiology and microbiology. And his students love him because of that energy. They talk about how much he brings to the classroom and enthusiasm. And I see it every morning when I walk in and I say, hey, Vern, how are you this morning? And he always says, better now that you're here. He always, and he's, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one he says that to, but, <laughs> but he just brings such positive energy and excitement and enthusiasm. And I really hope to be like him. And I really think he should probably be up here at some point too. I wanna say thank you to the committee um, for choosing me over my colleagues. Um, I don't know what I've done to deserve this, but um, thank you for, for picking me. It's, this is really a lifetime achievement award of sorts, and I feel honored and humbled. Um, I wanna say thanks to my department chairs throughout the years. Most recently, the interim chairs, while we're searching for a new one, who I believe I get to meet today. Um, Mike Wood served as an interim chair, Dr. Angelica Chapa and Dan Lindley, they kept things moving in the absence of a true full-time chair. Um, my former chairs, Dr. Southard and Dr. Halcom, who provided uh, amazing leadership uh, for our department, so much so that both of them have gone on to become the dean, and now Dr. Uh, Halcom is, as you know, our provost. They have provided us the tools that we needed to do the job that we do, and they've done it with style and class and dignity, and they don't always give us what we want, but they always give us what we need to serve our students. And their leadership, their mentorship, their guidance, even their constructive criticism when I deserved it and needed it has helped me be a better faculty member, so thank you. Um, there's a few colleagues that I wanna say thank you to, especially those in our department. Uh, every day that I come to work, it's a joy to work in the Department of Natural Sciences. Uh, we are like family, and uh, I know that I can always bounce ideas off my colleagues, every one of you in, in biology and chemistry and geology. And it's been a joy and a pleasure working with y'all, and I'm a better faculty member for having served with y'all. This award could pretty much go to any of y'all, I believe, and, uh, and I thank y'all for all the support and guidance. I want really, this is gonna sound out of left field for me, but I wanna thank the ladies from the, from the Stone Writing Center, uh, Linda Eubank, uh, excuse me, excuse me, Margot Sorrell, and Lori Jones. They have been the best neighbors since the library is being remodeled. Um, they have, since I've been at Del Mar, Linda Eubank has been a name that I've heard as a gold standard of how to be, and uh, those ladies are exactly that. Every day that I come to work, when I see them in the hallway, or if I just hear their voices a few doors down, it brings a smile to my face, because they exemplify what it takes to be a faculty member or an administ not administrator, uh, a staff member here at Del Mar College. They uh, bring enthusiasm, they bring joy, they bring excitement, lots and lots of laughter and uh, consummate professionalism and competence. And it's a joy to be around y'all and y'all motivate me and inspire me every day. Two other people associated with them are Mary Luttrell and Kate Kennedy. You see, when Vern nominated me for this, it was literally near the end of the nomination process. Finals hit and then he disappeared. <laughs> 
And about three days before I was to turn in all the paperwork, I had not heard from him. And it was my understanding he was supposed to do most of the legwork. And I don't think Vern understood all that, so I'm not blaming him or trying to call him out on anything. So I literally emailed Dr. Halcom and said, hey, uh, I was nominated for this. I got less than 72 hours, and I got nothing. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna respectfully decline, besides Mike Wood should, should get this before I do anyway. Maybe we can put him in my place. And uh, she sent me back in her specific and unique style, Two short sentences. Complete the process. Vern should have helped you. <laughs> and so, and so, excuse me. And so I scrambled. I had to call in some favors at the last minute. And um, I want to thank finally those people that, well, next to finally those people that wrote me letters of support. Cyrus Baker, who's one of our um, embedded advisors and my next door neighbor uh, in our offices who's been a friend and confidant. We have shared stories of our love of our wives and our children and our lives together. Um, we have lots of common interests and the things that we disagree upon. We can disagree for hours with respect, literally with respect and dignity for each other's belief systems. And we always inform each other and make each other rethink our positions on whatever it is that we're talking about. Um, Elda Garza and Surgical Technology, who oddly enough trained me when I was a student and went through the Surgical Tech program. Her and both Glenn Madden were my uh, clinical instructors at times, and uh, they showed me the ropes and helped me get through that program and become a good Surgical Tech, and helped me get a job. And oddly enough, just last year, I, or maybe it was the year before, I was chosen to do the review uh, of the teaching of Elda Garza, and let me tell you, that is one amazing teacher. Um, the command she had in the classroom with her students was inspiring. Her command of the knowledge, and, and knowledge of the subject that she taught uh, showed me why that she was my clinical instructor before, and she's just one hell of a hire here at Del Mar College. Um, Curtis Lee in Occupational Therapy Assistant Program wrote a letter for me. I called him. All of these people did this at the last minute with less than 72 hours. Actually, some of them did it within 24 hours, and not a single one of them hesitated. Curtis has been one of my confidants on the Windward campus. He's seen the product of my work. He knows my students, as does Elda. My students go into their programs and all the health science programs, and they get to see the work that I do. And, and I figured they knew best um, what I do and how well I do it, if I do it well at all. And then Jack Southard, um, my department chair and dean now, and he didn't hesitate. Nobody knows what I do in the classroom better than him, other than my students. He's had to observe me so many times, and he wrote me an amazing letter. And then finally, uh, Amy Tilton Jones, who stepped right up and said, I'll write you a letter in a heartbeat. And she did. So thank you all for your letters of support and for believing in me and thinking that I'm worthy of this. And then finally, I know y'all want to go eat, but you only get one shot at this, so I'm going to take it. <laughs> I want to thank my family for their undying love and support. I wish I could overcome this rush of emotion that hits me. But I can't. It's one of my weaknesses as a speaker. But um, my mom and dad can't be here. They're now in heaven. But I know they'd be down, smiling down on me proudly. Um, they've done a hell of a job raising three amazing productive citizens between me and my sisters. They would have raised a fourth. But unfortunately, they watched my older brother die of cancer when he was 19. And. Uh, They did that job with my father only having a 10th grade education. And my mom having a sixth grade education. She cleaned houses and did laundry for people since she was in sixth grade because it's all she knew how to do. And my dad, I later in life found out, was a star student and athlete who dropped out of high school so that he could join the Navy 
so he could send money home to take care of his family. And uh, he worked his entire life at things that he did not like to do so that he could make sure that his wife and his children were taken care of. And both my parents taught me that no matter what happens in life, you have an obligation and a responsibility to take care of your family every single day. I don't know how they woke up each day after they watched their son battle for four years with cancer and die. I think that would break me or most people I know. And yet they, they never missed a beat. They made sure the lights were on and the roof was over our head and we had a full belly. And we might have had hand-me-down clothes, but we went to school every day and they taught us that education was the way for upward mobility. And um, they were wise people. I wanna thank my two sisters, Fancy and Lisa, who are here today. Fancy's the... <laughs> These two ladies literally changed my diaper and wiped my butt. They might have done so, one of them for Dr. Escamilla, I'm not sure. Because he and, I, he and I, our lives have been intertwined. We've been friends since sixth grade. But my oldest sister and his oldest sister were very, very dear friends. And uh, I don't know if she babysat him or not, but maybe, I don't know. But literally these two ladies have fed me and clothed me and housed me, I lived with both of them at different times in my life when I was trying to f figure out what I wanted to do or how to get there. When I didn't have anything, they made sure I had what I needed. And they sacrificed what little they had at times when they could barely make ends meet. My oldest sister, Fancy, was my inspiration for going to college. She was one of the first people in the history of our family to go to college. And um, she has no idea how much it meant to me and how much it inspired me when she would take me off to Kingsville to Texas A&I, what it was called then, to football games or to events at the college. Just to be in that environment was inspiring and it made me wanna to go to college at a very early age. My sister Lisa, who is, she'd give you the shirt off your back, off of her back. She really would, with one hand. With the other hand, she'll rip the throat out of anybody who tries to take that shirt from you. She is one of the fiercest and most loving people that you could ever meet. And while she did not spend a lot of time in college, she did take a few classes here at Del Mar, but only enough to excel in her career. And they've both been amazing to me in my lifetime and their undying love and support have helped me through some difficult times. Um, my sister, Lisa, her partner, John Shaw is here. John has no idea how much he's inspired and moved me. He's, as a single dad, took care of three boys and raised them to be productive citizens. One questionably so, but that's okay. <laughs> no, nah, he's a good guy. But, um, but John um, is one of the hardest working people I've ever met. He started his own construction company and everyone I've ever referred him to tells me he's there 15 minutes early he leaves when he's supposed to, and he gets the job done on time. He has the highest level of integrity and is one of the hardest working people I've ever met. And um, I thank him always for his undying support as my brother-in-law. And then finally, the, most, the three most important people in my life. To my daughter, Hannah, man, she is one of the most beautiful, one of the funniest, smartest, and strongest young women I've ever seen. I always dreamed of having a daughter, of being a father and, I, and having a daughter, and I even had her named when I met my wife. I told my wife, I knew my daughter's name when I was 15 years old. I wrote a song, um, and in that song, my daughter's name was Hannah, and she had no choice in the matter when my daughter was born, <laughs> and she acquiesced. But I always imagined and dreamed of what a daughter would be like, and what I wanted in a daughter, and she has exceeded that a million times over. She's, she's truly an inspiration to me. She makes me laugh. She challenges me when I need to be challenged, and she'll call me out in a heartbeat. She's just a strong young woman. And while she's attending college here at Del Mar, trying to figure out where she wants to end up and how she wants to get there, I have no doubts that she's gonna be an amazing um, leader She's a natural boss. 
She's a strong woman and she's gonna be a great success, I know. My son Trevor, who couldn't be here today because he refuses to miss school and football practice. <laughs> um, and, and I get that. Um, Trevor has no idea how much he inspires and motivates me. He's everything that I wanted to be when I was younger. I desired to be a great football player, baseball player, and basketball player, and I was pretty good. And my son has excelled in every one of those far beyond anything I ever could. For those of you who don't know, my son is considered one of the top quarterbacks in high school football in the state of Texas. He had a record-setting season last year where he surpassed the records of both Patrick Mahomes and Kyler Murray who play in the NFL. Yeah, he's that good. And he doesn't, he doesn't even know it. He just does. He just does what he does and doesn't think about the consequences or the accolades. He's a far better basketball player than I ever was. And even this year, he went out for baseball after having taken six years off. He hadn't touched a baseball between the ages of 10 and 16. And in his first year back, he made all district as a pitcher. More importantly, I desire to be, I'm very competitive. I want to be the best at everything. I want to beat you at spelling, at math, you name it. I want to beat you at football, baseball, running. I'm very competitive, which has driven me to be successful in life. And my son is one of the few people I think is more competitive than I am. But he does it with a quiet humility that you'd never know this kid is that competitive. And so, even though I graduated near the top of my class, this year my son will either graduate valedictorian or salutatorian from high school, without a doubt. I believe he'll be valedictorian. And I know that because he told me, Dad, I'm gunning for number one and they better watch out. But also the young man that he's become. I've seen how he interacted with the girlfriends that he's had, and he's, he's had two of them now, and he was such a gentleman every day opening their door. Whew. Treating them with the respect and dignity that they deserve. Whew. Every day he used to take his girlfriend Candy to school in his lunchbox. He's a very thoughtful and loving individual. And I can't tell you how many times a, a principal, a teacher, a counselor, a coach has pulled me aside and told me how wonderful both my children are. My daughter and my son. My wife knows that we got an, an email recently from one of the counselors. And it was this long email and it just, every time I read it, it makes me cry knowing how wonderful my kids have turned out. And then finally, my wife, Stephane. Stephane has been my best friend and partner in life for the past 27, 28, I lose count, she knows. <laughs> I know it's more than 25 because we were together when I got hired here at Del Mar 25 years ago. She has been my confidant, she's been my everything. And uh, the most amazing mother, she inspires me every single day to be a better person because every day she works on trying to be a better person. And she helps me grow because every day she grows. And it is a conscious decision of hers to work on being better and stronger every single day. And it, it moves me and inspires me and motivates me. I don't know if any of y'all have seen, I think it's, what's the movie, uh, Jack Nicholson? Uh, uh, there's a movie where Jack Nicholson and, um, God, I draw a blank on her name. One of my favorite actresses in Hollywood. Uh, something's gotta give. And in this scene, they're at dinner and he insults her and she says, you better, you... She says, you better make, say something to make me feel good right now or I'm leaving. And he tells her this story about his illness and how he takes pills and how since he met her, he quit taking the pills. And she says, what is that? What, is it? what bearing does that have on this situation? He says, you make me want to be a better man. And that's what my wife does for me. So. Anyway, I've taken far too much of your time but I would be remiss if I didn't thank all those individuals. 
Um, and there's so many more of y'all that I could say thank you to across the campuses who inspire me and motivate me and help me be a better faculty member and person each day. So thank you very much for the recognition, for letting me take this time to say thank you to all the people who mean a lot to me. And I hope y'all enjoy your meal and your meetings. Oh yeah, my wife would be interested in that. Let's get out here.